Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing fantastic. My name is Tete Fernandez, and it's a joy to be here. And before I started, I want all your attention to the screens because I have a video for you. Israel has fought for its existence for, through so many wars, but this is a different war. Everyone's saying it. I'm talking with people everywhere at the stores or the pharmacies, wherever you go. And there's such an openness to hear about Yeshua. So we are preaching it boldly. And these people really um, are interested to know about the prophecies. Who is Yeshua? When is he coming? The end days. And means people are searching for the truth. It was 6 a.m. We were getting ready to get up within the hour, and I heard this funny buzz on my husband's phone, and it wasn't a regular siren. And then it kept going, and then the siren we heard outside. Then we all kind of flew down the stairs. Two of my sons were in different rooms. We said, rocket, rocket, get up. We went down the stairs into our fortified bomb shelter. The door handle had broken at Sukkot, and my sons were fixing it. My younger sons were trying to fix it, and so we only had a partial lock on the door. We turned the lights off, we closed the windows, we have barred windows in the bottom floor, and we thought, we were praying, we were just praying, what do we do? So the other option was to leave. And we were hearing, we've been hearing gunshots, by the way, for a long time. So that kind of played on what we thought, we'd, we either leave or we, we stayed in the bomb shelter and we had no idea that at that point other people were being drilled into their bomb shelters, thrown, the, the, the terrorists had thrown in their grenades and exploded. We didn't know any of this. All since then, we have gone from place to place. Um, our congregation uh, really helped us a lot. We found a hotel for a few days. Um, we went and uh, some cyber company helped us in Rishon. They were amazing, but we still didn't feel totally safe until we got here and the team here has been fantastic. The biggest need I think is actually physical and spiritual. Spiritual that they have the, the people you know praying for them and that they feel people are supporting them and the physical is that you know like us we left with the the shirts on our back just simple clothing and if it rains and it's cold they have jackets that they have food but mostly just prayer covering and just knowing that you, we have you have our back is huge um there's a lot of people who don't have bomb shelters there's still some people living out there um in the other settlements and they're they're really fearful um and there's still a rockets raging. We don't know what's going to happen in the north or the south. But what we do know is that this is Adonai's land. This is the land of the Jews. And he's Ishmael Hama. He's the man of war. He's going to protect us. So pray for us that we can all share Yeshua with these people. You know, that the firefighters are rescuers, but a greater rescuer, a greater redeemer is Yeshua, the Messiah, who is going to return and bring peace. And so that's that's our hope, I think. Really, if, if I could tell you one thing, it's not just that this is an unusual war. But only God in heaven knows what's going to happen. He, he has his timing and he has his purposes. And I feel really strongly that the main thing he's doing with this war is to get Israel ready and to bring hearts to Yeshua the Messiah. I had the honor to uh, land in Tel Aviv on December 8th and be in Israel during the month of December all the way to January uh, six. Um, I landed in the middle of um, Hanukkah and I had the joy to be in Israel several times by Hanukkah is one of the most joyous celebrations and as I walk into the streets of Jerusalem I could feel the pain on the air. I don't know if you ever have been in such a painful situation that you can breathe in the pain and it was like collectively the nation decided to push through and to celebrate just to declare that God was on their end and that they believe in miracles in the middle of the most harrowing situations. Uh, as I was walking down of one of the main streets with a lot of business, 70% of the business was shut down. And this guy who usually sends, um, sells Hanukkah and uh, Hudaika, uh, recognized me. I have been several times his store. He's an Orthodox very kind man he's a jewish orthodox proper and if you have any interaction with another person who is orthodox on the opposite sex um, they're very respectful of a space even if they're doing business with you but as soon as he saw me probably 30 30 feet away from me he ran towards me and hugged me and started kissing me on the front and this man wept and wept and wept i don't even know his name 
he just recognized me. And when I visit in the past, he always calls me sister and he would repeat over and over, what are you doing here, sister? What are you doing here? Like that encounter is during the whole month that I was serving in Israel. I had over and over and over, my favorite place became the shuk, which is the market, the farmer's market, because people will hear my accent and really quick turn around and ask, are you working here? And I would say, no, I just came to volunteer. And immediately, immediately tears come down. They couldn't believe. And very quickly, at the beginning, I fell off because my nature is not, I like to be behind the scenes. I don't like to be in the front end. But I really quickly understood that it wasn't about me being in Israel, that I was representing all the millions of believers who love Israel and are willing to show up and be there for them. It meant so much to them. Ladies will grab my hand in the shook and sat me on the coffee shop and said, why are you here? If you're Christian and you're supposed to hate us, why are you here? And like that, I had immense opportunities. I've been going to Israel at least twice a year for the last nine years. And I had never had so many opportunities to speak boldly and openly about Yeshua the Messiah. And when they would ask me why you love Israel, I would say, because you kept the scriptures and you treasure them. And because of that, I can follow your Messiah and I can adore that Messiah. And that Messiah of yours changed my life forever. And I could see their openness, their tenderness. You know how the Bible talks about they're stiff of neck? That neck is broken. And I had the joy to be in the team of firm, taking the position of Sam, who is one of the producers, videographers, producers. He's defending the country like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sons and daughters of believers in the front line. So sitting on their chair, on his chair daily, I was reminded that I would never know what is to wake up knowing that someone hates me to death and that I had to defend that nation. Um, in the month that I was there, I had the opportunity to be in two funerals of two believers. One was 19 and the other one was 23. I saw their families um, literally saying, we're not burying him, we're sowing them into the ground. And I saw entire units, entire units, listening to the gospel. And I saw commanders come to the front and said, I have never seen such a courage in a young man deciding to fight for their country. What I can tell you of a month, I, I could be here six hours and I would be able to finish. But I want to tell you something, Israel right now is in revival. I think we let stadiums tell us what revival looks like. But to me, revival is when people is in the streets asking, who is Yeshua, would you tell me? So I would charge you to pray for the local church because they have been in the most traumatized circumstances that no one can be. The last day before boarding the plane, by the mercy of God, I was allowed to um, be clear to enter the military base that is the closest to Gaza. We went with a group of Jewish veterans who are building showers. This is the third month of the war and the military base didn't have showers for soldiers. I want you to think what that shower does for you on a bad day. Imagine three months, more than a hundred days of bad days without a shower. So we entered to build that shower that believers financed them. And get which it was a huge part of that big amount of money. And that military base, what they do is they recover the bodies of the fallen soldiers. That's the whole purpose of that military base. 300 guys, you could see in their face, three months of war, their dark eyes. And at the moment we enter, it was like the king enter. What I'm trying to say is your prayers, your support, your post online, your videos, your TikToks, your boldness does make a difference. I didn't have an idea. I didn't have an idea. 
And I want to encourage you to support and pray the local ministries and the local church. We have the honor to partner with more than 70 ministries in the land. I had the joy, if you would put some pictures that I had there, to visit the ones in the north, to visit the ones in the south, to go all the way to the border to Lebanon to um, give donations that our partners gave us for the military bases, winter clothing, in underwear. They don't have socks. And a pair of socks did so much for so many hearts. So I want to encourage you, keep praying. The Lord is doing something big. He's using a lot of Messianic soldiers. Their entire units worshiping Jesus because they see the Messianic soldiers reacting different to the world. And they say, teach me your songs. Teach me, teach me what you're singing. The Lord is doing something very powerful in the middle of the most horrific things. And I want to encourage you, it does make a difference. It does. I saw it with my eyes. And I saw the amazing local church stepping in, knowing that we here are praying for them. God bless you.